Two huge doubts in the banks that wouldn't let me sleep. I couldn't find a way out of it. I spent my time in depression and crying. I was really drowning in debt. I was a person who owed almost $200,000. I had a ton of debts for like 20 years. I was feeling down in the dumps. I started to let go, to leave behind the fears, to leave behind the doubts. I managed to free myself from everything from that heavy and painful burden. I felt calm and confident speaking to the Department of Criteria and presenting them with my payment proposal. I've already paid off all the debts and I almost have this house completely bought. I have enough money now because previously I didn't have enough. I had six investments. Imagine getting rid of a $200,000 debt and on top of that, having something to invest now. It's awesome, thanks a lot. It's a total blessing, and I mean like a really big one, like huge. I'm happy because I'm free. Hello there, how are you doing? Good evening. All of you are welcome to join this special and intensive biblical finance class. We are excited to have you here. How wonderful that you're here with me today. This is undoubtedly one of the most special classes of this initial stage of our Biblical Finance Intensive Program. But before, yes, I wanna tell you that it's a great pleasure to come to this class here with you. It is truly wonderful to know that you all are still with me and still extremely dedicated, extremely dedicated where are the super committed ones? Super committed ones. Write it in the chat if you guys are here. Look, yeah, where are you from? Write it in the chat, yes. And this class that I'll give you today is the main foundation for applying biblical principles in this warm up for the second stage, which is the Christian week I control my finances. That starts this Thursday, okay? And listen, observe, on this Thursday morning, Affirmative, we will publish the hyperlink to Masterclass 1, which is a recorded introductory class providing an overview of Christian Week, right? The Masterclass 1. It will take place in an enclosed environment. It is only for those who registered for free through the intensive link, correct? Regarding the event, below the Masterclass video, not here, on the web, yes, below the Masterclass 1 video, sorry, you'll be able to join the exclusive Facebook community where you can get your workbook, do your exercises, and post in the community so we can follow you throughout the entire event and track your progress. It is going to be amazing. We are putting a lot of care into preparing this event, and I hope everyone enjoys it to the fullest. Yes or yes? Remember that for the second phase, second stage, it's important to be in the WhatsApp group because that's where we'll send you all the information so you can receive your free participation certificate, okay? That is correct. If you stay with me until the end of the event and remain in the WhatsApp groups, you will receive your certificate for free, okay? Look, our classes in the first stage in this format will continue like this until tomorrow, but starting on Thursday, there will be some changes, some important changes in the format, in the schedules. Some classes that we will have starting on Thursday will already be part of the Christian week. I control my finances. What is the second phase, which is hands-on, you know? The Facebook community of Christian Week will also be available for access on Thursday, okay? And individuals who access it will indeed have numerous complementary tasks to complete, right? This community will only operate during the event. There is a day designated for the start of our event and another one for the conclusion. And anyone who is not present at that location is going to deeply regret not being there. Thus, I urge you to pay close attention, okay? And seriously, I consider that today's class is very, very special. Why? Our class today offers a thorough answer to a frequently asked question. Here it is. Take a look and see for yourself. Doctor, how can I determine if I am aligning with God's plan for my financial matters? How can I be sure? How can I know if I really have my finances under control according to the Bible? How can I put an end to the constant pursuit of money and instead open myself up to receiving blessings as the teachings suggest? And prior to providing you with a list of 12 practical inquiries that will uncover whether or not you are genuinely obeying God in your finances, I apologize, but I must first give you a summary of some of the crucial aspects we discussed in these classes. 
Is that acceptable? So let us proceed. Is that satisfactory? The class today is very long, so pay attention. And it's very important, very special, OK? Do you want to think here? Let's start our class today by asking you a question. Are you concerned about constantly pursuing money to cover your expenses? Please respond with a yes or no in the chat or comments. What are your thoughts? Yes or no? Perhaps you will inform me, oh, doctor, what I desire most is to have my bills paid. I don't even want to have a lot of money. No, I just want to have enough to get by. Have you ever heard someone say that? Do you think so? I simply desire enough to make ends meet, you know? In a moment, I will provide you with further information regarding my thoughts on this matter. These thoughts have been developed through years of studying and practicing finances while considering the teachings of the Bible. But today I want to reveal the secret to you. We're going to have a special class about the secrets of banks in our second stage as part of our biblical finance intensive. And today I want to disclose to you the secret that will guarantee you never have to chase after money again in order to pay your bills. You will also come to comprehend today why a substantial number of individuals tithe and give offerings and still find themselves unable to have their finances under control. By the way, today you will acquire knowledge of biblical principles about finances that you may have never encountered in your church or any other location. So remain with me until the conclusion. The content is intense. And today I am going to yeah, provide you with the pure gold of information about finances in the light of the Bible. So look, pay attention. What's the secret to having your finances under control according to the Bible and never having to chase money again? What is it? You know, prior to informing you of this secret, I must refer to the biblical foundation here. Here, all the teachings are set in stone. And I need to remind you of what we talked about in the previous classes of this intensive. Do you remember? We already talked here about how to have financial peace, right? And why do many Christians not prosper according to the Bible, huh? We are currently discussing this topic. Additionally, we initially mentioned that money serves as a tool to fulfill God's purposes here on earth. And if you do not know how to handle that tool, you are at a significant disadvantage in your ability to truly obey God's commands. Also there in this class, I also said that I have attended hundreds of students, thousands of students, thousands of mentees in my mentoring programs. Look, the vast majority of these students arrived in debt or without any extra money. I've also said that I help people who are investors too who don't have any debt. Yes, I have a student, even a mentee who doesn't have any debts, who will even meet her in our intensive program. But regrettably, it is a minority. However, yes, there are. And I informed you about the way the story unfolds for the majority of individuals who approach me with debts or financial problems. What is it like? Look, there are a bunch of people. They arrive with the bar set very high, feeling extremely embarrassed about their debts and having reached a certain age without any assets to their name. I recall numerous instances of individuals who felt ashamed to provide a negative testimony as Christians. There is a second group of individuals. They felt as though they were earning insufficiently and were enslaved by money. Let's agree that spending the entire month working solely to pay the bills is a kind of slavery. Are you in agreement with this statement? Is your response affirmative? And look, if you have debts, then the Bible itself states that whoever owes is a slave to the lender. Do you understand? It is mentioned in the Bible. There's another group of people, a third group, who were running away from financial problems, denying that they had to learn how to handle them and transferred the responsibility for this matter to God. They were not adhering to the biblical principles of sound financial management. And nearly all of these individuals were unaware of these principles that I am going to present to them today, you know? And yes, a lot of them gave a tenth of their income and made an effort to remain loyal to God. But everyone, without exception, ignored the most important biblical principles about finances. Yeah, there is a fifth group of individuals who believe that at some point in time, God would perform a miracle and enhance their financial situation. And why was all this happening? Why? Look, in addition to the disobedience to the principles, 
One of the reasons is that these individuals did not know their true identity in Christ. Have you ever experienced that feeling? Get in touch with me via the chat. Yes, 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 yes. Look, they prayed, but they lacked awareness of their divine lineage as children of God. And when you possess the identity of a child, a cherished daughter of God, you are entitled to receive an inheritance. Just that it's not as simple as some churches have preached out there? No. And I already said that in the first class. And you'll understand it with today's content in a much deeper way. Pay attention, right? Where are the super committed ones? Super committed? Do you want to have this content? Yes or yes? Yes. Hit me up in the chat. Yes, yes, yes. So what was taking place is that you see these individuals commenced to hold the belief that they were not deserving of possessing money. They believed they weren't born to have it. And maybe God's destiny in their lives was dead. Many of them stated that they simply desired to have sufficient. They began to lose their sense of self at that point. Your identity as a son. Forget who they were. Forget that God created you for a much larger purpose than simply working to pay the bills and fulfilling mundane obligations in life. Due to that very reason, these individuals start denying money. They avoid thinking and talking about it. And in the end, they become enslaved by money, losing their freedom and independence. The majority of them believed that living openly or renewing loans at banks was a normal aspect of life and didn't give it a second thought. Many still believed that they were only able to purchase significant things because they obtained loans. And the truth is that individuals, the individuals who have such thinking, look, they had their identity stolen by someone else. And who arrived to rob you, murder you, and annihilate you? You are aware of who it is, correct? He is the enemy of our souls. He is not God. So I want to remind you of some of the things we have talked about in this series of classes in our Biblical Finance Intensive, okay? All right, point? Jot it down. Some highly significant points. Look, you possess the identity of a son and daughter of God, regardless of any circumstances. You have been brought into existence, brought into existence in your own image and likeness. You were brought into existence to exert control and govern the earth. Does your father own both the silver and gold? Is the answer yes or yes? Is that correct? It is essential to be able to access that information and have the correct purpose, which aligns with the purpose of the kingdom. And all you need to do in order to experience it is to learn how to have your finances under control according to the Bible as he instructs and guides. And that is exactly what my student Yolanda did. Take a look at Yolanda's case, examine the testimony. It is truly incredible to see what she actually implemented in practice. With you guys about the complete course, I control my finances. I am creating it. I can state it is marvelous. It was a transformative experience for me. I was truly experiencing a rather turbulent period of time with a multitude of commitments and an overload of commitments that I had to manage and navigate through. And not today. The manner in which they present things allows me to quickly identify the exact location of my problem with ease. And then I was able to successfully solve it. I could clearly see the solution by replacing the high interest rates with lower ones. I have already repaid two loans that were consigned. I have already repaid one loan. I am saving up to get another one. I already purchased the ticket to spend New Year's with my daughter. I have already made three applications. I even purchased some stocks just to observe how it goes, to initiate learning, learning, doing getting to know how things work through practice, discovering things. They placed items in a highly transparent manner, truly transforming our lives in a profound and impactful way that has had a lasting and meaningful effect on us. Do not provide things pre-made, but assist us in comprehending and uncovering things as they are meant to be. They placed us on the correct track. Dr. Tyler is an amazing doctor, and her entire team is also incredible all working together to help us with that. 
I've already paid off two consigned loans. I've already paid off one loan and I'm saving money to pay off another one. I paid for the car insurance up front. And this course is really a game changer in my life. That's why I recommend it to anyone who really wants to change their life. Just as it is said in Romans 12.2, concerning the renewal of the mind, we often find ourselves needing to break certain ways of thinking because I truly believe that God is the ultimate stakeholder in ensuring the prosperity and blessings of his people are realized. God desires this, but he desires this transformation in our life. He does not want us to squander. And that is why I suggest the wealthy Christian. That is all I needed to express. Thank you very much. Yolanda's testimony is incredible. Yes, yes. I remember like today that in less than 60 days of tutoring, Yolanda told me that she had already paid for car insurance with cash. Yeah, and that she had never done it in her life. That's delicious. Yolanda started investing in stocks. She discovered a whole new world, which I call the world of impossibilities. A world that few believe is possible. But a very important detail here about what he's talking about and that I want to wake you up to is putting it into practice. You see, what Yolanda did was take the biblical principles she learned here in the first stage and started putting them into practice, following the step-by-step -step process that you will have access to in our second stage, which is the Christian week I control my finances. Where are the super committed, the super committed? Yes, there is a cake recipe, yes, to put this into practice. This and until the end of stage two will have a much clearer financial reason that you need to follow to apply this as well as your financial route. It's important for you to know your financial path. And I'm going to talk about this in our second stage, which is the Christian Week event, I Control My Finances. In it, I will reveal a step-by-step -step of your financial journey that shows exactly what my students do to achieve transformations like Yolanda's. But you're not getting anything now. If you make it to the second stage without knowing the biblical principles, our foundation here, the first thing you need to be clear about is what these principles are, okay? So let's proceed here. Our class today is highly significant. Look, that is what you are going to discover in just a short period of time. And in order to assist you in gaining more clarity on that, even on this very day, take a look, there is a very special gift specifically for you. Today, my team has given you, yes, with a checklist file of these principles that is in the secret PDF that was transmitted to the WhatsApp groups. That is the reason why it is of utmost importance to be in the groups so that you do not miss out, right? And if I were you, I would connect right now to one of the WhatsApp groups for the intensive. The link is below this video, so I don't miss out on the upcoming surprises that we will only have in the WhatsApp groups in our second stage, okay? However, at this moment, I am obliged to inform you why I believe it is a substantial mistake to think, oh, I just want to have enough to live comfortably. Would you like to know? Yeah? Look. Have you ever observed someone communicate like this? Uh, I don't want to have too much. I just want to have enough to live comfortably without any excess. Seems quite noble, correct? Yeah. Can you perceive? Yes. Does it appear to be so? Now, I will explain to you the reason why we do not agree with this concept here in our ministry. There's a phrase here that we really like in our ministry, which is the following. Please pay attention to this as it contains very rich content, isn't it? Pay close attention. The phrase is as follows. Either the money serves you or you serve the money. I'll say it again because it's really important. Either the money serves you or you serve the money. And I say this and I repeat it in the documentary, you know? And which of these options do you choose? You have got to make a choice, correct? The documentary titled The Power of the Bible in Financial Life. Look, if you choose to serve money, you're a slave to money. If money serves you, it's just a tool. Indeed, everything that you have mastered becomes your master. Anyone who possesses the identity of a child is fully aware that mankind was created to exercise dominion and govern over the earth and submit to the will of the creator. And the creator's will is for you to obediently follow the principles that he taught in his word, in the Bible, the sacred scripture that serves as a guide for believers in their spiritual journey. Yes or yes, 
Yes. So now look at your Bible now, team. Put it in the chat now. Galatians 4 verses 1 and 2. Examine your Bible at this moment and exceptionally significant scriptural learning. Shall we go together? It's like that. However, I assert that despite the fact that the heir is under legal age, he is indistinguishable from a slave, even in the event that he possesses all assets. However, it's subject to mentors and administrators until the moment designated by his father. So look, of course, this word doesn't just talk about financial life. I know, I believe it mainly speaks about our spiritual life as a whole. Yes, yes, I know. But look, we have already gleaned valuable insights from the Bible. Yes, that finances are indeed a highly spiritual matter too. Contrary to what many people think, yes, in our intensive program here, so take a look at this. By considering this word from Galatians, we start to understand why as heirs of God, who is the owner of everything, right? God is the owner of everything, right? I have already talked about this in a class. Numerous children are still enslaved to money. The question is, why do they remain in this situation? Because when you are below the legal age, as mentioned in the original translation of the word, it specifically refers to immaturity or incapacity. Isn't that correct? And why is a minor also called incapable? Isn't that right? This word says that as long as you're immature or incapable, you'll continue to be a slave. Here we're talking about the financial life. So just to remind you, there's some important learning happening here. Pay attention. A very important biblical lesson here. For as long as you are unable to get your finances under control, you will remain a slave to the relentless grip of money and debt. What is up, doctor? He is calling me incapable, not at this moment. However, I want to reinforce this in you. You have to have what it takes. Everything will be given to you in accordance with your ability. You see here, I'm not talking about tithing, offering, or anything like that, but about other biblical principles. No, I am talking about the ability, maturity, and responsibility to manage what God puts in your hands. More specifically in the financial domain, I am talking today about adhering to biblical principles with respect to finances. What matters here is not the quantity of possessions you have, but rather the level of faithfulness you demonstrate in managing the resources that God entrusts to you. You have a sizable inheritance that awaits you when God starts to recognize your capabilities and sees that you are deserving of it. And is this valid for the material world as well as for the spiritual world? Yes, I am aware that it may be difficult for you to hear this information at this present time. And I confess that it was the same for me when I discovered it. But having this understanding is necessary for your transformation today. Perhaps you are aware or perhaps you are not aware of my story, but the reality is that I have been enslaved by money and debts. Yes, I did go, did I? For a couple of years in my life, I used to disregard or ignore my financial problems. And I even initiated the process of recounting this story in the special documentary that was broadcasted on this particular Sunday. Look, if you have not seen it, watch it and tough it out without crying also with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yes, oh yes, awesome, yeah, yeah, oh, how awesome. So look, and I will tell you about the lessons I learned in this story and all my financial mistakes. Real soon in the financial week, sorry, in the Christian week, I take control of my finances, yes. Wanna know my biggest financial mistakes? It's a learning experience. Speaking of Christian week, I track my finances. Reminder, it starts this Thursday, the day after tomorrow. Exclusive event for registered participants at link below video. Okay, don't miss out. This will not be available on YouTube, no. It will only be accessible for individuals who are in the intensive WhatsApp groups. And in case you are not already, kindly take a look at the link provided down here, okay? Moreover, on Thursday in the morning, I will post Masterclass 1 in the WhatsApp groups. Additionally, don't forget to join the session. If you are working at this hour, there is no problem. Please check it out whenever you have time, okay? It is a recorded masterclass one. The crucial thing is for you to watch it promptly because these classes will not be available for an extended period in the region. It is highly significant. One more thing to note about the WhatsApp group gift is that I am going to reveal the secret here in our class regarding the true nature of our special gift. My financial difficulties only got better when I made the decision to cease running. How did that happen? Cease evading financial problems. Observe. 
When I made the choice to extricate myself from the comfortable circumstance of seeking a loan to settle another one, therefore, to summarize the rationale behind why I believe it is an error to desire only an adequate amount, we are discussing here your status as a cherished son, a cherished daughter of God, and that you were brought into existence for a significantly more profound objective than the payment of bills. Where are we extremely dedicated? We also communicate here in other classes there is a sequence, correct? That each one of us was born with a purpose, a calling to fulfill here on earth, correct? We also had a conversation today that money is simply a tool, correct? In order to fulfill the purposes of God, okay? I ask you content in this class. Let's move forward with enthusiasm, with enthusiasm, with enthusiasm. Look, if you wanna have enough to get by, how are you going to fulfill your life's purpose? How are you planning to fulfill your calling from God? How? If I had just enough to survive, wouldn't I have invested in this project? No. Perhaps you have no idea how much it has cost us financially, emotionally, and spiritually. Bring you here for this free event, free of charge. They require a considerable amount of resources for themselves, a team of individuals. And if I had money just to live well, and I have this, but if I only looked at that, I would probably be missing out on being used by God to transform thousands of lives. Does this make sense to you? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, yes or yes, yes. And again, once more, is it really right to want to have just enough? I ask you. It is evident that we should not be greedy, you know, and never simply desire money solely for the purpose of money. We already talked in a class about these precautions that the Bible warns us about greed. Yeah, this is important. And look, but when we are in the midst of God's will, I really like it. I always desire to be in the center of God's will. Do you also have the same desire? Yes or yes. And we possess grand aspirations that are in harmony with your objectives. If we need resources in this case, all good. Having just enough to get by is not something that fulfills those purposes. That is why I say that sometimes desiring to have sufficient to live is self-centered. Because you are only considering yourself, not thinking about others. I have mentioned previously that many individuals perceive it as something noble, correct? However, it is extremely selfish. When you say, for instance, ah, yeah, everything is fine with me. I do not care about the rest of the people. No. And what about the other individuals and how does your call end? Do you feel called to serve more people? Christian life has more to do with others than with oneself. I consistently emphasize this point for my team members. You can't help others when you barely have enough for yourself. In order to overflow into someone's life, you need to have an abundance in your own. Yes or yes, this is very important and this is Christian, yes. Here at the Christian Ministry Rico, we always say that a truly rich Christian is like a river. A river possesses a spring where a substantial amount of water enters, yes. However, it also possesses an overflow where a significant amount of water comes out. Is that true? There is no way to pour a large amount of water into a river without causing it to overflow. The situation is the same with our finances, right? Ponder it. Our finances are akin to a river in terms of their flow and movement. Stop thinking that having your finances under control, according to the Bible, is just about having your accounts in order. The truth is, if you think in that way, you're already in disobedience to the word. Yes, having your finances under control, according to the Bible, is much more than that. I have got to talk to you about this today. Today, I am your mentor. I am here to teach you and provide guidance. Christian life revolves around obeying the biblical principles when it comes to managing finances. And this is what it means to have your finances under control, according to the Bible. And this is the secret to never chasing money. It sounds even contradictory, but it is like that. When you laugh initially, money is generated effortlessly without you needing to worry about it at all. Yeah, contradictory, contradictory. When you laugh at principles, it is no longer solely about the money, but about following and upholding the principles and being obedient and faithful to them. Okay. And here I know that you have learned in previous lessons that peace comes by following the process. Yeah. 
and it's not in the cards. Yes or yes. Yeah. Follows all biblical principles about finances without exception. This is some really important advice for you today. Now let's move forward. And I ask you, right? Have you been adhering to the biblical principles outlined by God when it comes to your financial life? I'm going to ask you a series of really important questions that are of great significance. Now I'm going to repeat this question because it's really important. Do you have your finances under control according to the Bible? Answer yes or no in the comments down below. What do you think in the chat? Yeah, yeah. I need to emphasize the question here so that you can provide me with an answer. All right. I repeat, answer down here. Do you have your finances under control according to the Bible? Yes or no? Could you say, ah, doctor, this is very obvious. If I have all my bills paid, then I have my finances under control. If I don't have any debts, then I have my finances under control. But I have already informed you at this moment and presently I am going to demonstrate to you that it is not true. No, look, managing finances per the Bible is more than just that. It's something that goes beyond paying bills on time, extending to a wider scope. Getting your finances under control is an act of obedience to financial principles. It is simply going through the motions. So I am asking you once more, I desire for you to contemplate on that today. You know, look, look, I have a question. Have you been obedient to God in relation to your financial life? Yes or no? Observe. I have already communicated to you at this location that it is not just about paying the bills, you know? I want to encourage you today to confront that reality so that I can assist you in transitioning to a distinct reality from this point forward. What do you think? Shall we go together? I'm your mentor today, right? And you're going to miss me afterwards, right? Our class is extremely intense because our finance intensive has a start date and an end date. So you must give priority to yourself today. Be honest with yourself. Do not get it twisted or confused. Only by acknowledging your current situation will you achieve transformation, true transformation. Do you want to have a real transformation in your financial life? You want? Yes? So... Look, I want to introduce myself quickly here because I've seen that there are a lot of new people today who are starting our intensive. And look, if you still don't know me, watch the documentary to discover the power of the Bible in financial life and also a little bit of my story. I'm Taylor Campos, the financial life mentor. I've dedicated part of my life to teaching people how to have their finances under control, make money to spare, invest to achieve, make God's dreams come true in their lives, and all of this according to the Bible, you know? I engage in all of these actions because I genuinely believe that God created us for a far more significant purpose than merely spending a lifetime solely focused on the task of paying bills. And being a slave to money, our financial life is much more than this. And for them, you must have already understood as well, yes, that you need here in this class, you are already aware that obeying the biblical principles of finance, of financial management is very, very important. Now let's proceed in our class, okay? So I would like to suggest a test to you at this moment. Shall we proceed together? I'm going to create a list of questions for you. All right. It is a list of 12 essential questions to determine whether you are adhering to biblical principles regarding finances and to ascertain if you are obeying God in your financial matters. Should we proceed together? And if with this you have your finances under control according to the Bible or not, shall we do this together? Yes? No? Yes, yes, definitely yes. Look then, this test is in the secret PDF file that was sent in the WhatsApp group today. And if you are not a member of the WhatsApp group, you have missed that file and you will need to jot down the principles I'm going to mention here. Look, there will continue to be a multitude of exclusive things within WhatsApp groups. And I am also going to tell you the secret word so that you can open the file today, okay? Is that satisfactory? So pay attention, okay, let's proceed. The initial question, all with biblical foundation. All inquiries with biblical foundation. Team, please put it in the chat right now. Look in your Bible and turn to Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 8 for reference. It is similar to that. Take a look at the ant, lazy bones. Ponder upon your paths and be wise in your decisions and actions. He does not have a boss, a supervisor, or a ruler. However, he keeps his occupations in the summer and during harvest time when he is not working for someone else. Delve into your food. And when we bring this concept into our financial life, we have a significant lesson here. 
we need to store our professions during the summer, right? What is the significance of summer in our financial lives? In the periods of prosperity, we are actively building our safety net, you know? It's important to be prepared for any unforeseen circumstances that may arise. And what is the rainy day fund? It is approximately having a three to six month reserve of your fixed expenses to cover unexpected expenses. So here's the first question to determine if you have your finances under control according to the Bible. Question one, do you, like the ants, maintain a safety reserve of three to six months worth of your fixed expenses to ensure financial security? Look, for example, if you spend an average of $500 per month, do you have $1,000 to $2,000 invested for your emergency fund? Do you want to do it or not? If you do not do it, you are not living up to this principle. And as the Bible states, ants store their occupations in the summer, that is during the most favorable times. And have you completed it? Yes or no? Please write it to me in the chat. Can you confirm with a yes or no? Yes? Proceed. Okay. You can do it like this. Yes, one, two, no, but better yes or no. Make a choice. Yes or no. It's up to you. Now let's move on to my second question. I want to remind you what the Bible says in Proverbs 21, 20, which goes like this. The wise person has sufficient resources to live a life of wealth and abundance. However, the fool, no, because he spends all the money he earns. In our financial life, we have the wise man as the one who has sufficient funds to live in wealth, prosperity, and abundance. But this word indicates that the fool spends all of the money he receives. Yes, you are aware? Having your expenses covered does not make you a wise individual? No. Why? Because you can have all of your bills paid and still spend all of your earnings. And be a fool? Fool according to Bible, ain't it me saying this? It's in Bible. In this context, let me ask you, do you spend less than you earn and are you wise from Proverbs? Do you want to write it to me in the chat? Yes or no? Please let me know. That's awesome. Very good. Let's move forward. Before asking you the third question I have for you today, I want to remind you of what the Bible says in Matthew 25, 21. And the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in the little things. I will trust you a great deal to manage. Come in and share the joy of your teacher. Look, so I'm asking, have you been faithful with the little that God has given you? Yes or no? When I talk about this super important concept, a lot of people respond to me like this. Doctor, I'm a faithful spender, but still my financial life doesn't evolve. However, the reality is that it is not only about making donations. This concept is related to effective management. This passage from the Bible makes it very clear that there is a requirement for the Lord to put a lot in your hands. The agreement is that you remain loyal in handling the small amount that has already been provided to you. So consider, if you were God at present, would you grant yourself additional funds based on the manner in which you have been managing your financial existence? Yes or no? Do you really manage well what little you earn today? Yes or no? If you're not, look, God will never give you too much. Yeah, look, God knows you will definitely waste it without a shadow of a doubt. God doesn't want that. Being faithful in the little things is about maximizing the resources that God gives you. Knowing how to do more with less is multiplying. It's not wasting. What does the word talentos mean? The Bible says that we should be good stewards of the Lord. And as good administrators, we must manage well everything that God puts in our hands. Take a look at what he's saying currently. Team placed it in the chat, Lucas 16, 11. So now examine your Bible, Luke 16, 11. So if you can't be trusted when dealing with the riches of this wicked world, who will trust you with the true riches? So are you a good butler, trustworthy enough to manage the riches of this world? God has given us the sacred duty of managing his belongings in a broad sense as our responsibility. Look, stewardship involves the wise and faithful utilization of everything he puts in our hands. And so, have you been faithful in the administration of the little that God has given you? Yes or no? If you were God, 
Could you handle more resources in your hands the way they are being managed today? Answer that question honestly now. Write it down here in the chat, yes or no. I want to see the answers here. We're getting to the end, okay? Now, the fourth question I have for you is, do you practice the law of the fifth part? Look, the Bible says in Genesis 41, 34, and 36 about the advice that God gave to the Pharaoh using Joseph from Egypt for this, which goes like this. Look at your Bible. Allow the Pharaoh to do this and designate governors over the land and seize one fifth of the land of Egypt for the duration of the seven years of abundance. Refer to Bible context of General 41, 34, and 36. And now I want you to come to the law of the fifth part. This law is a true game changer when it comes to the generation of wealth. And what was the result of Jose implementing this principle? Jose, hailing from Egypt, transformed Egypt into the wealthiest nation of that era. God instructs us, yes, through the narrative of Joseph, an influential principle for achieving wealth. Now, one-fifth part of everything you earn. However, this resource now needs to have a purpose. Yes or yes. And what was God's purpose in guiding Joseph to save one-fifth of everything he produced? To offer aid to the neighboring nations during times of drought and water scarcity. But doctor, in theory, it's easy to say, I want to see it in action. How can I make this fifth part shady for myself? What? So I inquire, have you followed God's instructions and implemented the rule of one-fifth in your life? Write it here in the chat, okay? Oh no, if you haven't managed to have this fifth part left over, it's because you haven't known how to do it. Because if you knew, you would already be doing it. And this is what I see with several of my mentees from the complete program, I Control My Finances, which is my mentoring program. Upon their arrival, they have not yet achieved the goal of acquiring extra money or funds. Some even come with a ton of debt. And after learning the ins and outs, in practice, they end up becoming investors. So I want you to respond here in the chat. Do you utilize the one-fifth rule and ensure that you have 20% of your income remaining for investment? Is it a yes or a no? It is important. Please write it to me in the chat now, right? Oh, no? Remember that I'll show you how to distribute your money based on biblical principles. In stage two, the Christian week, I control my finances starting on Thursday, you know. Come on, let's go. We're nearly there. Now inform me if you utilize the one-fifth rule in your life, indicating whether your response is yes or no. Fifth question of the day. We're getting to the end. This question has everything to do with the last two that I just talked about for you. If you are faithful in the administration of the little that God gives you, if you comply with the principle of the fifth part, if you now have the resources to multiply, and the one who multiplies is the good and faithful servant, yes or yes. So I'm asking you, do you apply the law of multiplication? Do you purposefully invest the gold coins that God puts in your hands? Yes or no? Mark now yes or no in the chat. Now look at your Bible in Matthew 25, 14. There is a significant law taught by Jesus in the Bible, which is referred to as the law of multiplication. Yeah, want to learn more about multiplication? See, everything God gives us are talents. And he instructs us in the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30, which I previously discussed in a prior class, about the significance of multiplying our talents. God clearly commands us to multiply the talents he gives us, both in material and spiritual aspects. And in order to increase our money, a solid financial education is absolutely necessary. In the full program, I manage my finances and I instruct my mentees to allocate 10% of their earnings to education, treating it like an investment jar. This is a large jar, extremely important. And I assure you that your investment will never be misplaced because the knowledge acquired is never in vain, you know. Look, the more knowledge you have, the more accurate decisions you make. And in finance, it's the same way. The more you know how to make money, the more money you make. Yes or yes. However, please keep in mind that this resource must have a purpose and it must have a goal. We invest with a specific purpose in mind. 
When I discuss investing over $100K in ads to attract people to participate for free in the intensive and the Christian week, am I in control of my finances? Yes, I am investing in my beloved. I have a purpose. And when I talk about investing in video production, documentaries, content, and classes to serve more and more people, this is exactly what I mean and what I am committed to doing. I am utilizing a valuable asset that has the potential to render me immobile in the financial institution, but instead I am employing it for a specific objective. And of course, this resource will multiply because when you invest with a purpose, with a vision to serve and transform people in a genuine way, God always honors and makes the return not only spiritually, but also financially. It is a consequence. So I am asking you today, do you apply the law of multiplication in your life? Do you invest and multiply the resources that God puts in your hands today? Yes or no? Write it down here. Yes or no? I want to see the answers here. Yes or no? Let us proceed to question six at this moment. Look at your Bible in Luke 14, 28, 30. Yeah? Which one of you, if you want to build a tower, doesn't first sit down to calculate the price? to see if you have enough money to complete it. This is how verse 28 of Luke 14 goes. This passage, you know, teaches us that it's not enough to just dream about the tower, but we have to plan how to build it. It is insufficient to simply prophesy that you will have the tower. We must plan the tower. Yeah, yeah, and that is why many Christians fail. Yeah, pay attention. That is why we are going to talk a little more about financial road mapping. During Christian week, I take control of my finances, which is our second stage, starting on Thursday, when I'm going to talk about your financial path and the road you should follow. Now I ask you, do you have your financial life planned for the next 12 months? Kindly provide your response by writing yes or no in the space provided below. This pertains to question number six in the survey. Look. In the Christian Financial Week, I'm going to give you the financial roadmap with the steps for you to have your finances under control according to the Bible if you invest to make your dreams come true. Do you have a route for six types of people? Look, what are the different types of people? There is a one-way road available for individuals who have debts. There is also a financial route, number two, for those who are unable to save money but do not have any debts. There is a route three for individuals who are investors. There is a route four for individuals who do not have any income. There's a route five for those who don't have time for finances. There's a route six for those who don't have any money. If you haven't signed up yet for the Christian week, don't miss out on the biblical finance intensive group, okay? So you don't miss them. Don't miss the classes. Now for the seventh question. Have you donated at least 10% of your income? Yes. Do you believe in tithing? Have you paid your tithe? Yes or no? It's a biblical principle of finances. If you don't believe, it's not a big deal. Have you donated to the needy as Jesus instructs us? Please write your response in the chat, either yes or no, in relation to this question. Look, realize that tithing is an important and powerful biblical principle. You know what I'm saying? But I think now you're beginning to comprehend that it is not useful to adhere to only one principle. We have to follow them all. Furthermore, it's just one of several other biblical principles of finance. Okay, now question eight, another biblical principle of finances. Have you enjoyed the sweat of your labor? Yes or no? What is this? There are individuals who are extremely concerned about minimizing expenses on prayer and financial investments to the extent that they fail to derive pleasure from the money that God entrusts to them. And isn't that what the Bible tells us? I'm going to explain more about this. In one of the lessons of Christian week, I take control of my finances. However, observe it is an important biblical principle and my mentees truly appreciate it. You must definitely enjoy your money. It is important. However, there is a recommended percentage for this purpose. And look, another way to say enjoy is also take advantage of. The word expresses that a man should enjoy the fruits of his labor and make the most of them. And this is also a powerful principle. I will provide further information about this in our second stage, and I will demonstrate to you how to allocate the appropriate percentage of your money for this, all right?
and is currently enjoying the money? Do you spend it or simply enjoy it? What exactly does enjoying mean? Is it spending your money on things that bring you pleasure? And that is also biblical. Whether you are in debt or not, enjoying your money is a principle that must be fulfilled and prioritized. And not doing it will demotivate you from having additional funds. But be cautious today. Do not go around desiring to enjoy and spend your money with every person. No, this is not the correct way. Oh yes, there is certainly an appropriate percentage for this. Therefore, I will instruct you in the second phase, which takes place during Christian week, in order for you to be able to implement all the principles. So answer me at this moment. Have you had a good time? Have you taken full advantage of your money today to spend it on the things you truly enjoy and like? Write it down here in chat, yes or no. We're reaching the end, okay? With enthusiasm, let's proceed. I would like to see the answers. Yeah, yeah, I am sure. Let us go now to question number nine. Do you pay your bills on time? Yes or no? Yes, this is also a biblical principle of finances. Not paying bills on time is considered to be ungodly, according to the Bible. It's not me who's talking, it's in the Bible. Look at your Bible now, Psalm 37, 21, it says like this. The evil person borrows and does not repay, but the righteous individual demonstrates mercy and gives. Display mercy and provide, correct? Take a look, are you genuinely paying all of your bills in a timely manner? Write it to me in the chat, yes or no. I want to see the answers here. I'd like to know, have you been postponing those bills that are sent to you? Exercise caution. You are behaving in a manner that is contrary to the teachings of the Bible. All right, please focus. In question 10, there are a total of 12. We're approaching the conclusion of our class. Are you currently debt-free? Check out your Bible now. Romans 13, 8. Don't owe anyone anything, just love one another, because the one who loves the other has fulfilled the law. Please write in the chat now if you are debt-free, indicating your financial freedom. Examine the Bible, and that is how you will achieve freedom from debt and have no financial obligations and be indebted to no one. All right? The Bible says that the one who borrows is a slave to the lender. At this point, I ask you, are you free from debt and loans? Please write this information to me, affirmative or negative. Question 11, have you been able to steer clear of family disputes regarding money matters? Consult 2 Timothy 2.14 in your Bible. Keep consistently reminding them of all these things, cautioning them in the presence of God to avoid getting entangled in unnecessary arguments about words and their interpretations. Yesterday, I even spoke during the family finance class about a survey that caught me by surprise and left me astonished. Look, approximately 70% of families have disagreements regarding financial matters. Were you aware of that fact? And you? Have you ever had a disagreement with your family regarding financial matters? Do you have any family conflicts over money? Share it in the chat. Can you reply with a yes or no? Assisting the needy is biblical. It's mentioned in 1 John 3 verses 17 and 18. If an individual possesses material resources and encounters their brother who is in need, yet lacks compassion towards them, it is impossible for the love of God to abide within them. So is it important? Have you gone above and beyond in assisting those in need? Have you made donations to those in need? Please write it down in this space, indicating either yes or no. Do you wish to ascertain whether your finances are under control as outlined in the Bible? You desire to know? Well, divulge the information then. At this moment, calculate the number of affirmative responses you have provided for each of these inquiries. I think those individuals who have all the answers do possess control over their finances in accordance with the Bible. These 12 biblical principles of finance apply. And the more yes you have marked, the more controlled your finances are according to the Bible. So let us recap now because this is extremely important for your financial transformation, correct? Let's go with Ghana. We're at the end of our class. Be honest and answer the questions together, shall we? One, do you do like ants and have your safety reserve of three to six months of your fixed expenses? Yes or no? Two, do you spend less than you earn and are you wise like the proverb 21.20? Yes or no? Three, have you been faithful in managing the little that God has given you? Affirmative or negative? 
Are you adhering to the regulations stated in the fifth section, affirmative or negative? Do you make use of the law of multiplication, affirmative or negative? Have you made preparations for your financial life for the upcoming year ahead of us? Yes or no? Have you contributed or given away at least 10% of your income? Yes or no? Have you relished the sweat of your toil? Affirmative or negative? Have you settled your bills promptly? Affirmative or negative? 10, are you free from debt? Yes or no, with enthusiasm? The most recent questions that have been asked, 11, have you managed to avoid family fights over finances? 12, do you help those in need? Yes or no, look, look over here. If you responded negatively, there are a plethora of inquiries. It is a test here. No need to worry, I am aware. That happens to the majority of individuals who have not yet acquired knowledge of these principles. And look, the important thing is that from now on, you are aware of what you have to do to have your finances under control and be obedient to God in your financial life. The crucial aspect is what you're going to do from this moment on. What decision will you come to? And if you're dead set on switching, I'll give you a really important piece of advice here. The first step you must take to start your transformation and learn how to apply these tips to your financial life is to apply and participate in stage two, which is the Christian week of I Control My Finances, which starts on Thursday and it's time to get to work. Stay tuned to the WhatsApp group where I will send the link to the first recorded masterclass exclusively through this link. Jot it down. It'll be on Thursday morning. I'm aware that the highly dedicated individuals, the highly dedicated individuals will witness it. Yes, the group in the initial hour. I know. Correct. Where are the extremely dedicated, extremely dedicated? And this is what my student Jeanette accomplished. Look, it's possible for you to change. Yeah. Jeanette learned the biblical principles and learned how to apply them in her life. And the result, I want you to see it now. Jeanette's outcome. Hey everyone, I want to share a bit about my experience, which has been extremely helpful in managing my finances effectively. Guys, let me tell you, this course has been a game changer for me. I mean, I'm really learning so much from it. I can't even express how grateful I am to God for putting this course in my path. And so it's been an unforgettable experience that I'll carry with me for life and that I'll be passing on to people, teaching people, because I never imagined that I would learn so much about controlling my finances because I thought I wouldn't be able to get out of debt anymore. I would stay in debt for the rest of my life. No matter how hard we tried, me and my husband, we weren't able to get out of debt. And I desire to inform you individuals, folks, that it is with happiness, a genuine joy in my heart. With deep gratitude, gratitude beyond measure, gratitude that knows no bounds, we did it. I managed to successfully pay off my house in this incredible 60-day course period of time. I was able to successfully reduce my expenses at home, effectively manage to rent a room, and ultimately, all of these efforts helped me to pay off my house and also settle other small store debts. The impact of achieving these financial milestones is truly unbelievable. It feels like I am living in a dream. Even today, the reality of owning my own house still feels surreal. This journey has been a long one, with years of dedicated payments and moments of doubt, including legal proceedings and asset-related challenges. There were times when I thought we would never be able to have something of our own, like my own house. But now, it is a dream come true, and I am immensely grateful for this accomplishment. So, like, it's a dream come true, a dream come true. I'm so happy, so happy. Expressing gratitude, I give thanks. Thanks to God. I appreciate the Rich Christian Program. And above all, besides being wonderful, it is the guiding light of the Bible. So, it is a course that I highly recommend to individuals. And there are already people asking me about our life change, inquiring how we've been managing and coping with the changes. Hey, I have already been talking about the program. God's blessing, God's blessing. May God bless you every day and keep using you more and more in the lives of people. In the name of Jesus, big kiss. May his blessings be upon you abundantly. Look, Jeanette, I've already demonstrated the case of Yolanda as well. And now Jeanette's as well. He settled his house in 60 days. Get prepared to be astonished. Take a look at the potency of applying, yes, applying these biblical principles.
Paying off the house in 60 days seems like an impossible task for most people. But the truth is that when you do your part and apply biblical principles, things happen. The proper utilization of the Bible is incredibly potent. And I demonstrate this in the unique documentary, The Transformative Power of the Bible in Financial Life, which was broadcasted on Sunday and is currently accessible on the YouTube channel for you to watch and gain valuable insights from. And if you wish to learn step by step, if you desire to get down to business towards this type of transformation as well, look, the second stage of the intensive is the Christian week and make a practical event of the Christian ministry 100% online and 100% free that started last Sunday on Thursday. You will have all the support material, a closed and restricted Facebook community to post your exercises. You will also have a free participation certificate at the end and much more. And this is undoubtedly the biggest online finance event for Christians. We have a large number of individuals registered up to this point, and I will be anticipating your presence on the website. Look, and if you haven't signed up yet to receive your access, join the WhatsApp group at the link down here and do everything and do this for other people too. As a Christian, be generous and share it with those you know, with those who need to change their financial lives. And now I'll give you the phrase from today's class. We're getting to the end. Look, today's class phrase is, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. The most important action you can take today is to comply with God's guidance. And if you desire to apply that in your financial life, commence implementing these principles that you have acquired knowledge of here today. Yes, it is indeed possible for you because you saw it was possible for Yolanda, for Ranete. It is also possible for you too. Look, in the class that is scheduled for tomorrow, yes, in the morning, I will deliver a talk on the topic of making money by providing service to others. It is a truly excellent class. Additionally, during the evening, we will discuss the point at which I begin to handle my finances, correct? How to manage your finances, where to start. Tomorrow's class is the one that brings about the most financial freedom in people. And if I were in your position, I wouldn't miss it for anything in the world. To recap what I've just told you, tomorrow we will indeed have two classes without a doubt, one in the afternoon and another one at night, all right? And on Thursday, we will commence Masterclass, one of our second stage of our intensive biblical finance, which is Christian Week, a significant event in our program. Come on, if you enjoyed today's class, kindly give it a like now, yeah? And make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed yet, you haven't subscribed. And also don't forget to share the video, okay? Presently, I am on the verge of disclosing the password that will grant you access to the classified PDF file. I know you want the password. A lot of people are messaging me in the chat. Where is the password to open the PDF? I know about this. It's great that you have patience, which is a fruit of the spirit. And look, where will they find all these questions I am going to talk about now, the password? All the topics I discussed today are included in the confidential PDF, all right? And the password is obedience written in lowercase letters. Yes, and it is actually the keyword that we will be focusing on in today's class. The keyword for today is obedience. And it should be written in lowercase. Team, put it in the chat now, okay? I'm gonna leave this class recorded for a few more minutes so you can review it in case you need to write down any biblical passages from the principles. But don't forget, the keyword is the same as the password that opens the PDF. It's obedience. Team, kindly ensure that the attendance list is posted, as I will also provide an uplifting video for you to watch. This way, you can easily access the link to the attendance list. Is that all right? And now I'm departing and I'll wait for you tomorrow. Stay with God and we'll see each other soon. May God bless you. Goodbye. Because after the rich Christian, I start to see life in a different way. My financial problems were fading away. A mortgage on my house, which I would take another eight years to pay off, I tell you that today I own a paid off house. There are several other debts that were troubling me and having the ability to do something that had not occurred in years in my life. Having extra money, having extra money of mine, my money never used to be extra. So managing to have some extra to invest as advised by the rich Christian in the portfolio we are following, following the completion of the course, I successfully managed to have some money left over from my salary which was an achievement I hadn't been able to accomplish for a number of years. 
I managed to pay off the debts, a debt of 23,958, if I'm not mistaken at the time. In a span of 60 days, I managed to completely pay off this debt. This to me was an invaluable accomplishment that I can't put a price on. In addition to that debt, later on, I also paid off another debt. So for me, this was crucial. So at this point in time, now that I have a certain amount of money left over from my salary, I started making an investment as well. I began investing some money and I did not have a car. I used to walk. I have a car now. It is not a fancy one, but I have a car in my garage now. This, in my opinion, is absolutely priceless. Wow, what an overwhelming feeling. I am filled with immense happiness and gratitude. I state that the wealthy Christian was positioned in my existence at a critical juncture. It was of utmost importance. So the rich Christian was truly remarkable. It compelled me to completely empty myself and wholeheartedly believe that those incredible people were there to provide unwavering support, invaluable mentorship, and invaluable guidance on how to truly eliminate debts, achieve a well-balanced financial life, make wise investments, generate additional income, unearth hidden talents, and gain clarity on my desired path in life. I've already organized myself. I no longer have to borrow from loan sharks. I no longer have the private shops and businesses I had before because it was getting difficult. Everything is under control. My financial life is completely under control. I don't have that worry. One of the things I constantly had was power cuts. I couldn't handle it. Today I don't have. Sometimes I see a cutting car passing by and I breathe like this. Then I don't have. I'm calm. Everything is up to date. The year 2020 was the first year that ended, that I ended with 1,500 reis. I can say, thanks to the rich Christian, I'm at peace. I can have a much calmer financial life. Financially, I'm not a slave to finances. The debts already existed, car financing, still paying for it. So there were quite a few things there, open debts, paying for land in installments, right? So that bar where we stayed, wow. And now what are we going to do, right? And that's when I started studying. I started the course slowly and began to see the transformations, many transformations. Reduction in bills, surprisingly, I learned to do extra activities that we didn't even pay attention to before because we were in our comfort zone. So I acquired new skills and knowledge. I established an online store through the course where they educate us on the importance of continuous self-improvement, undergoing a shift in mindset, thoughts and attitudes, and constantly striving to better ourselves. And that helped a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So with each step I took within the course, I saw the changes. And in the end, it was success, total success, both material and spiritual. It was wonderful. I had some loans which were insured. And there we learned how to reduce these loans, how to pay, how to pay off these loans. And we kept practicing this exercising control. For us, it wasn't enough to do things halfway. It only served us to do it right, to do it completely. Today, I am able to sleep in peace. The complete transformation in our lives has been absolutely incredible and utterly profound. I initiated the story by discussing the debts I had, and presently, we are actively engaged in the process of making investments. My dear friend and partner in this venture, we are investors. At this moment, we were able to contribute and provide assistance to individuals in need, which is also a very impressive principle that makes a difference in people's lives. Today, I feel at peace. Today, I sleep peacefully. We still face our life's challenges. It doesn't stop. But today, I can plan, organize myself to achieve, reaching new things every day. 